This is what comes to mind when you think of the concept music. Talented performers playing beautifully handcrafted instruments, all producing lovely sounds. But this little black box can also produce music. It's a MIDI box, a musical instrument digital interface. And today, musicians are using devices like these to get music out of, well, just a plastic box with nothing more than silicon chips inside. Though it's unlikely it will ever sound quite as good as a string quartet. Today, we look at and listen to MIDI music on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week is Bob O'Donnell, editor of Electronic Musician Magazine. Bob, we have the Miracle Piano here from Software Toolworks. A lot of people have heard about this with Nintendo, but you can use it actually in a better way with your personal computer and turn your computer into a piano teacher. Let's show our viewers how okay. this actually works. Here's a, a song that it wants you to practice, so try to play it and make, make a couple of mistakes on purpose here. And you see the screen shows you the notes to be played. Uh, on the staff, the actual finger you should be using at the bottom of the screen, you see the actual keyboard as it's depressed on the piano, and you've finished a pretty lousy practice session here, and let's see what the teacher inside the computer says about that. You had some trouble with that performance. You made 24 errors, I guess. So what's neat is the computer is really listening to your performance. Now, what I want to do is show what would happen here uh, if you kept on really messing up. And it's really great, especially for kids, because it'll turn what looked like a music lesson into a video arcade game. So we'll go to the main menu, go to the arcade, and ask it, say, to play this Ducks game. And it's Ode to Joy. You see, it's the same piece of music now, but in a different way. Uh, and take a look at this. Okay, so these ducks are coming along, and they're on the staff just as if they were notes. It's asking you to recognize those notes. And if you hit the right key, you kill the duck. And if you hit the wrong note, you don't kill the duck. Pretty neat way to learn how to play the piano. All right, this is kind of fun stuff we're talking about now, but electronic music is really becoming serious. I mean, it's becoming mainstream in the music business, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, it's very much of a professional tool. It's been around for several years now, and it's established itself as a main production tool. But the beauty of MIDI is it also works for hobbyists and allows people mm -hmm. to make music at home uh, very cost efficiently and in a way that they could never dreamed of before. Um, and on the professional end, what's happening now is the one thing that MIDI has been lacking is the ability to incorporate um, vocals yeah. and acoustic guitar parts, mm -hmm. things like that. And now people are adding digital recording capability to MIDI sequencing programs, which allows them to integrate everything into mm -hmm. a complete system, right. which they can control and manipulate from their computer. All right, Bob, today we'll look at the newest MIDI music products on all the major platforms, the Amiga, the Macintosh, the PC, and the Atari. Now, the Atari has become known as a music machine because it's the only computer that comes with a MIDI interface built in. We begin today with MIDI music on the Atari ST. This is the National Association of Music Merchants Convention being held this year in Anaheim. The NAM, as it's called, is the premier international marketplace for musical products. And it's no surprise that it looks more like a computer show than a music convention. As usual, one of the stars at NAM is Atari, long the musician's favorite. And at this year's NAM, Atari's new music division helped launch several new third-party products. C-Lab was showing off its Notator sequencer. Notator lets you work on nearly 1,600 separate tracks, of which 64 can be simultaneous. Each track can contain 16 separate and simultaneous MIDI channels. Mike Pinder is one of the original members of the Moody Blues, and he uses Notator. Of, right now I'm doing a lot of uh, sequencing involving uh, flying in extra vocals and things like that, and this program works very well for that, for reconstructing music even, music that was recorded in the past. I'm able to resample it and then put it, can recompile it using Notator. Another new MIDI product on display at the Atari booth was the Digital Master Workstation that lets you do two-track digital record and playback direct to disc. The whole hardware-software combination sells for $4,500. Mick Fleetwood of the group Fleetwood Mac is another Atari computer musician. Fleetwood uses the new HOTS MIDI translator invented by Jimmy HOTS. 
It's been called the first true hyper instrument, enabling a musician with limited technical skills to create complex music. My main frustration was I'm, I'm a drummer, of course, I'm not a keyboard player, and it started with really uh, saying it must be possible in this day and age to develop a system where someone can either learn to play, uh, if you're a player, uh, to, to become instantly far more prolific, quite frankly, than conventional methods. The HOTS MIDI translator uses a database of chords and sequences and functions like an intelligent musical accompanist. The device sells for under $200. Chester Thompson is a drummer who's played with Phil Collins and Genesis. He uses Cubase, a sequencing program from the Steinberg Jones Company. The newest version of Cubase lets you not only control MIDI inputs, but also gives you remote software control of multi-track tape machines. In all, there were 16 developers showing off new music products for the Atari platform at this year's Music Merchant Show. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. The Commodore Amiga has also been a popular MIDI music machine. Here to show us a new Amiga program called Super Jam is Melissa Jordan Gray, president of the Blue Ribbon Soundworks. Now let's set your credentials up a bit. I understand you're the one who did the music actually for Atlanta's big presentation to the International Olympics Committee and the multimedia thing that got you the Olympics in Atlanta. That's right, that was a lot of fun. Did you do that on an Amiga? What did you use to yes, create that? Yes, actually we, we did it with an Amiga um, using another piece of software that um, Blue Ribbon publishes uh -huh. called Bars and Pipes, uh -huh. Bars and Pipes Professional. And actually, aside from getting to work with a lot of really talented people, uh, it was a wonderful testing ground for the later versions of our mm -hmm. music packages because I, I really learned what was needed. Now, are you a musician, a hacker, or both? I am a musician. I am a saxophone player. If you look, <laughs> if you look at the screen here, you'll see there a is a saxophone. saxophone. That's the Hitchcock. Yeah of software right, all right there. All right, let, let's go to the software. This is called Super Jam, That's and this right. is software, not hardware. That's correct. Okay, for your Amiga. Mm -hmm. All right, show us what you can do with Super Jam then, Melissa. Just okay. run us through it. Okay, what you're looking at here is a Super Jam keyboard, and if you can look carefully, you'll see that on the bottom row of the keys are chords, and if I click down, I'm able to actually hear chords playing mm -hmm. from each of these keys. And uh, if you know anything about music, uh, chords are an assemblage of notes that play together. Mm -hmm. So if I click on a C and there's a big M, I'm going to get a C major chord. Oh, I see. That's what the big M, little M, mm -hmm. major, minor. Okay. That's right. D with a little M, minor chord. Mm -hmm. And if I want to learn a little more about chords, I can click over here and I can hear the different parts. Right. Now, let's say that I happen to play this one and love the way it sounds. Mm -hmm. No problem. I'm just going to pick it up, drag it over there, and, and now drop that's it on a chord. key. Wow. Exactly. So you can set up all these hmm. different chords on your keyboard and then use a command here called Save. Uh -huh. It's yours. Huh. So then the next thing I, I do is pick a style. And here okay. I've got a style called Amadeus, which mm -hmm. is based on Mozart. And I'm just going to press play. And the Super Jam Band starts playing. What are they playing? Where does it come from? Well, what they're doing is they've been taught uh -huh. a certain style of playing. What we're the listening to. Amadeus style. That that's you correct. Okay. And the style is maybe a drum part and a uh -huh. keyboard part okay. and a piano part. And the relationship of them working together. And also, very quickly, I could just click, listen to dance tune. Hmm. And see, by clicking on keys. So you are playing this music mm -hmm. right now? I'm deciding. You're playing the chords. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I could also play it from my keyboard here. So I could just. Again, you don't need a separate keyboard, a synthesizer. This is all just coming out of, the, is, out of the Amiga. This is coming from the Amiga. And uh, what you can also do, this is a lovely mode here, create chords and create seventh chords on all notes. See, I can mm -hmm. do this without looking. <laughs> like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> no, okay. That's how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. But I can also change the tempo. Uh-huh. You can slow it down. And let's say we're singing along. Uh -huh. It's a little bit too high for you, I can tell. Right. So we can go ahead and lower that key uh -huh. by clicking uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. so this looks like a lot of the buttons you have on one of those expensive Yamahas or Casios. Yes, or but something. there's a difference yeah. because on the Yamahas and the Casio, first of all, you can't tell it how to play music. Right, right, what you can right. do with uh -huh. this one, 
You can't just suddenly change keys quickly, and more, most importantly, you can't write it down. See, this is just the, sort of the playground mm -hmm, of Super mm -hmm, Jam. Mm -hmm. But we can move forward and say, okay, I'd like to write a piece of music. Okay. We're going to call that the intro. Mm -hmm. We're going to make our intro, let's say, five measures in length. And this actually remembers the key I'm in, uh -huh. remembers the tempo, right. and it even remembers the style right, that I was right, doing. But right. I'm going to go ahead and put us back at the key of C. Okay. And I just start playing. Now, when you say start playing, I mean, where's that melody coming from? Okay, well, what I'm doing is I'm telling the program what chords I want it to play. Okay. I've told it what style, right. what key, and what tempo. And it takes all that information and it puts it together and it plays music. So you're saying a musical moron could kind of sit down here and close their eyes and do what you did, and something comes out and you could say, I wrote that. If you <laughs> can't play an instrument, this will fool your mother into thinking you went to <laughs> piano lessons every day. Promise. And if you can play music, you'll be able to play music even better. There's no question about it. Yeah, now, now where does it fit? Is, is this both for the person who doesn't know anything and wants to mess around, and is it also for the musician who really wants to use That's this right. as a tool? That's right. If you are a good musician, you will be a great musician with Super Jam. Mm. If you are a video producer, you'll become a music producer with Super Jam. And like I said, if you couldn't carry a tune with a bucket, you won't <laughs> need a bucket. To carry more than All right, that Super, Jam, Super Jam is for the Amiga. How much does it cost? Uh, it lists for $149 uh -huh. and can be purchased for as low as $79 uh, in the store. Well, Melissa, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, some of the new computer based music gadgets are rather incredible, and we're going to visit the Center for Computer Research and Music and Acoustics at Stanford University to see the cutting edge of computer music. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> The philosophy here at Stanford is to use computers to go beyond human capabilities in creating music, but at the same time, to allow computers to extend natural human creativity into the musical realm. For example, this is the BioMuse, also known as the Air Violin. It's a signal processor that takes its input from the performer's musical movements. The right arm does notes on and off, and also loudness. The more muscle tension from this muscle that's being picked up, the louder the note can become. And in the left hand, since it's the, the fretboard, we change note number. The more muscle tension, um, the higher the note. And the more you relax, the lower the note. One of the most difficult musical sounds to simulate is that of the human voice. This is spasm, the singing physical articulatory synthesis model. The problem with spasm is it's too perfect. In a way, she's the perfect singer. She can sing a note without vibrato. She can sing a note without any pitch deviation, without any deviation at all. But uh, we realized very quickly in computer music that those very aspects are the parts that make sounds unattractive in a way to the ear. So Cook is spending most of his time trying to add human imperfection to Spasm's voice so it will sound more believable. Another experimental musical device here at the Stanford Center is the radio baton. It lets you conduct an orchestra simply by waving around two batons over this flat box. As you wave the batons, the sensors in the box detect your movement. The computer already knows the music, but will play it according to how you move the batons. What is ironic about the radio baton is that its developer says the technology helps the performer focus on interpretation rather than technique. Because um, the technique, in some sense, is easy on the instrument, uh, allows the performer to focus all his uh, attention and mental abilities on the expression or what he wants to say with the music. Uh, what he wants to say could be called the soul of the music. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Now, you don't need a million dollars worth of computers to play around with MIDI music. You can even do it on your plain old PC. Here to show us how is Dennis Lebrecht of Passport Designs, Inc. Now, Dennis, I have to tell you, we did a show on MIDI music a couple of years ago. I mean, there were keyboards, wires, lots cables, boxes. Lots, I can't believe boxes. it. I mean, I was, last I was part of, of setting, setting some of that Just stuff one up. computer. <laughs> you have one keyboard, one, one box. One what, what is the, the Roland uh, box? That's a Roland like? sound module, and that's capable of producing up to 16 different sounds at the same time. So it's really like having 16 keyboards yeah, so all in one. 
really changed about. in the past couple changed of years. Changed completely. You can have a full-blown recording studio right yeah. here. Without okay, we have a PC that. running Windows, and you have a program called Encore. Encore. Tell us about it, and then show us what you Encore do. Encore is a transcription program, notation program for professional musicians, and it allows you to literally print sheet music, put a piece of sheet music up uh -huh. on the screen and print it out. There's a dove several different ways that you can put music up on the screen. I can mouse notes in one okay. note at a time. I can use the keyboard to step notes in one at a time. But probably the most dramatic way to use the program would be to actually enter in a piece of music in real time. Mm. I simply hit the record button and play. And as soon as I hit the space bar, it turns into music. Now, th this used to be a pretty difficult thing to do. Not uh, too transcription long ago, is yeah. is not a, an easy thing to do. I you know you can sit down yeah, there. Yeah, well, but I mean, the how accurate is this? The the computer is actually more accurate than what you can play. Uh -huh. uh, it will actually transcribe up to 64th note triplets. More yeah. often than not, you don't want to see that fine right, of notation right, on right, the screen. Right. Uh, you want to get an approximation of what you've played, so you can easily hand it to somebody mm -hmm. and be able to play it back. I could literally be putting up 64th note rests every yeah. time. I yeah. lift my hands yeah. up off the keyboard. Uh -huh. uh, it's a very, very accurate program. And once you have the music up on the screen, it's, Encore is very, very easy to make changes to the music and edit your music. Much like a word processing mm -hmm. program where I can cut, copy, and paste or change things, this now becomes a graphics program where I can say, oh, take this measure up to here. Uh, I want a little more space between these two measures. Um, I want to slide this over. This is a wrong note. Let me mm. just grab the note and change the and note. You can hear it as you, as you can you hear go. it as you're playing uh -huh. it. I can grab my eraser and take out individual notes. I can just go to my palette here and grab different notes and enter them in on the screen, or mm. grab slurs, curves. So I can start making this look like a real piece of music. Yeah. Once everything is up on the screen, I can start moving things around. This is being used by professional musicians, amateur musicians, uh, everybody from. Uh, a small recording mm -hmm. studios to Herbie Hancock and Oscar yeah. Peterson. Now, besides notation, what else can you do with this? There are other things I well, think Well, there you're is showing actually, yeah. Uh, this really is a sequencer, and yeah. I, I'm not sure if you've covered sequencing quite yet, but basically, this allows me to do full blown orchestration with this program. And as you can see, I can see all the parts on the screen. Mm -hmm. I can actually take a look at um, another window, call my staff sheet. And this allows me to change the volume of any of the tracks on the screen. Okay, so there are all the different lines that are going in the music. And here's and my string part, and I can bring the strings up. Wow. So I have a, a mixer as well. I can change the sounds if I want to make the string sound a uh, horn sound. I can simply click in here and choose a different device. Oops, I don't have that set up. Mm -hmm. Let me try okay. <laughs> Uh, and change to a different device, uh, horns, right, piano right, part. Right. I can mm. change everything around and then look at it. And then, of course, from here, you can actually print it out. So right. print out on a dot matrix printer, on a laser printer, uh, whatever quality printer you have. It is a Windows program, so it'll support any printer that yeah. Windows supports. I can automatically, for instance, take the bass line, extract that part to a new staff, hmm. and hand the bass line off to my bass player. So unlike what we saw earlier in the show, this is really not for the novice encore. This, this is, is a the, professional the musician, musician program. Who, who now we do have a music. program that is available called Music Time, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very similar program to Encore. It's derived from Encore. It doesn't have quite as many bells and whistles. No. I can uh, basically, you do need to be a musician, or right. it helps to be a musician. Um, I have had people go from the Miracle Keyboard system after they've learned a little bit, right to a notation oh, program. Oh. As a matter of fact, this is available. Um, this program works on the Miracle Keyboard. Really. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you, what's the minimum hardware you need to do something like this? Basically, any computer, uh, we have a PC version and we have a Macintosh uh -huh. version. The PC version uh, needs to run Windows. Right. So anything that will run Windows well. But will I mean, run you need the Roland box and, and you need like a that. synthesizer of some sort. Yeah. I can deal with just a, you could, a single you could be keyboard. Working right off I can keyboard. work with this. I can yeah. work with, again, with a Miracle mm. keyboard, uh, with a Sound Blaster yeah. if you just want to use the mouse. Uh -huh. uh, but typically, you'll need some kind of keyboard uh, available at most. Commercial and stores. what does Encore sell for? What's the price? Encore is five ninety five, and Music Time is two forty nine. Dennis, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next up, MIDI music on the Macintosh. Stay tuned.
The Macintosh has been a popular MIDI music platform thanks to its built-in sound capabilities. Here to show us the newest music software for the Macintosh is Keith Borman of Opcode Systems. You're going to show us two things, Keith, uh, what you call your low-end Easy Vision and a higher-end product called Studio Vision. What, what is the difference between high-end and low-end in computer music? Because the low-end sometimes just really sounds like sort of computer music, and the high-end sounds like real music. Uh, the high-end provides you additional ways to view the music mm -hmm. and manipulate the music. Uh, it gives you graphical ways to manipulate it and also do, to do something called quantizing mm -hmm. a little bit more accurately to give you more of a human yeah. feel. Oh, you're going to show us some of this stuff now. Let's start with Easy Vision, which you have up here on the Mac. And just tell me what this does. Well, it's a 16-track uh, sequencer, uh -huh. and a sequencer is um, it's like a multi-track tape recorder right. in one sense. In another sense, it's like a, a word processor right. in that you can copy and paste information from one place to another and view it randomly. All right, yeah, show us access. how you would use this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into record, and I'm going to go into loop record. It's going to do four bars, and I'm going to repeat those four bars okay. over and over again and add additional elements of music. And we can hear the count off here. I'm going to go... Okay, we've added the drum parts. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch to a bass part now. Now we're getting all those playing back. Maybe. Right. Now in, in addition to that, I'm quantizing on the fly, so it's doing rhythmic corrections, almost like a snap to grid. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Okay, let's add another part here. And one more part, let's add a uh, horn part. So you're just laying down a track at a time and mm -hmm. accumulating those tracks. Okay, let's look at that information yeah. very quickly. And what we'll do is we will view it on what's called a piano roll. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things about Easy Vision is there's online help wherever you look. Okay. So you can kind of teach yourself while you're playing music. And this is not System 7 only. It also okay. works with System right. 6 okay. if you're still doing the switch. All right. Okay, and there's the counter, mm -hmm. for instance. And here is the piano roll. And a piano roll is like a, um, what yeah. you would suspect. And one of the nice things about this kind of environment is I can click on a note. And that was the note. Oh, and you're just moving the note. Right there, huh? Yeah. And you can so, hear what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, and so if I play a wrong note, right, I can move right, it to the right. right place or get rid of it altogether. Uh -huh. You can only imagine what uh, Mozart or Beethoven yeah, would have done oh with boy. an environment oh like boy. this. Okay, what else can we do? Uh, well, I can uh, draw in a crescendo. Uh huh. Let's go ahead and play that. Just like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, there is a mixing window where I can say, Mix it. Now we're going to see MIDI activity up here, and I'm going to pull the drum parts down. So you can do real time mixing, automated mixing on the fly. Right, right. Now, very quickly, what I'm going to do is create a song for you. Okay. And this is the arrangement window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in letters of pre written sections of songs. So I'm going to say A, B, A, B, C, B, 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 B. Uh huh. And these are pieces you've you created before. Yes, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I've put my I've linked my song sections okay. together, and we're going to. Well, as you okay. said, I mean it's a word processor, and you're sequencing mm -hmm. the pieces of music all at the same time. All right, Keith, I see you have a microphone here, and I don't want yes. I don't want you to get away here before we you show us how you can actually record your voice into this. Okay. So what we have been looking at right now is Easy Vision. What right. we're going to do right now is look at Studio Vision, uh -huh. which we released about a year and a half ago, and it has uh, taken the world by storm. It allows you to record 16-bit CD quality uh -huh. digital audio at a very reasonable cost. Okay, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my microphone, mm -hmm. and let's make sure that we have some music first off. Okay, very good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Record and sing a little bit along with it. Oh, 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 
na, na, na. Okay, let's listen back to this. Oh, because you just recorded what you were singing into the mic. Yeah, and we can view this. So along with the, not the MIDI capabilities of a professional sequencer, it also gives you the ability to manipulate and, and see uh -huh. digital audio. So let's listen to that back. And you can see the bouncing ball, just like the other program. It gives you an idea where the bars and beats are. And there you are. And you're recording right onto the hard drive here? That's correct. Uh -huh. Direct to hard disk. All right, now real quick, we only have a couple of seconds left. Show me how you can then add your own voice into this again. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and merge it into itself. And I'm going to just grab the waveform and slide it just a little bit. OK, let's listen to what that sounds like. <laughs> sort of cut and paste and slide, and then yeah. you can go back and play with it. That's great. Keith, thank you so much. That's really terrific. Easy vision and studio vision. All right, that's our look at MIDI music. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, this is a special summer edition with a focus on software. Here are last week's best-selling software titles for the PC according to PC Connection. Microsoft again occupies the number one and two positions with DOS and Windows upgrades. And rounding out the top ten are Approach for Windows and Pizzazz Plus. Next up, Paul Schindler in our summer software review. It looks like paper, but it could be a quarter-ounce pen computer. It's actually an access form for a new Windows application called Paperworks for PCs with fax boards. When you're not in your office, you send a form like this to your fax machine to put information into your PC or get it out. See these names? The handwritten ones were added from the field. The typed ones were added at a keyboard somewhere. You can really manipulate faxes on screen. If one comes in sideways, you can turn it, zoom in or out. This is one of the best fax displays I've ever seen on a PC. Unleash the power of your PC with Paperworks, $250 from Xerox in Rochester, New York. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.